It is the perfect time to have a conversation over a beer. It's the Brewmance on the radio. What we do is we get together, hang out, crack open that beer, and have interesting conversations. The Brewmance is made up of me, Rob Hunter, and him, Mike Russell. And look, this is how this whole thing started, Mike. Going back to the very founding of the Brewmance. We realized that we're having interesting conversations over craft beers, and we're like, why don't we turn this into something? As a way to bring people together. And I think that that is at least what so many of us are looking for in this crazy time. And that's all I want to do is bring people together and have conversations honestly without getting all emotional. Emotions can happen and will happen, but not to the point where you can't continue to have a conversation. Right. I think every major social issue in our nation's history, uh, it either it, 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 it was resolved over conversation or at least the process started with conversation yeah. and good conversation, open-minded conversation, talking like a grown-ups kind of uh, uh, conversation. Dare I say a collaboration. <clears throat> Do you see my segue there? I so love our segue. beer of the week. Thank you very much. A collaboration brew. And this is why we thought it was very appropriate to have a cl collaboration brew. Uh, this is between a simple machine brewing company and transplant city beer company out in the west side yeah, yeah. that's right and uh simple machines by your hood there buddy it is it's up in north phoenix yeah so this is my hood and your hood collaborating with a uh, a belgian style saison it's Ooh. called martial law which comes from uh, the brewer marshall norris and justin egbert that's right and I, i'm gonna i open mine i already, I already got mine open yeah, i'm ready to go i'm at it buddy I'm well look I, I think that the bottom line is here the way to sort of move forward, I think, is, is to crack open a beer and just have a conversation and approach it from that sort of non-emotional place and just say, okay, because that's where it starts. And I'll kind of refer back to the founding fathers. As they were debating the United States Constitution, they had to come up with some severe compromises because you had 13 different states trying to figure out the best way forward, trying to create a union so that they were able to work together. So they came up with all these things, and we don't have to debate whether they're right or wrong. I mean, we've debated those millions of times yes. at this point. We've had a couple hundred years to do so. Yes, we have, and we still continue to do so. But the point is, you know what they did a lot of? Drinking. Mm -hmm. They drank, and these guys were passionate, they were argumentative, and they were you know, the leaders of the day, trying to create an entire nation around a document that we still use to this very day, a document that would stand the test of time. So point is, they literally sat down, they drank some mead, some wine, some beer, whatever it is they could find, some cider, and they hashed it out, had difficult conversations, made it happen. And that's our foundation here at the Brewman. So we believe that any any topic can at least there can there can be common ground that is found uh, in every conversation with a beer. Because here's the deal: beer acts as a shield. Like I feel protected having this, these two cans between Rob and I, if we have a heated discussion that we want to really have hashed out, we have this between us because this is what? It's a common ground. We're both sharing the same beer. We're enjoying the same beer. And we can break in the conversation about the heated topic, whatever it is, and talk about this beer. Say, hey, real quick, what do you think about this beer? And then now find commonality again. Now get back to it. Defuse the situation. Get back to it. This is exactly what beer does. And, you know, it makes you feel a little good a lot. I'll use this as an example. I'm sure that many people have had this debate. Who's the greatest quarterback of all time? It usually comes down to two, maybe three choices. The correct answer is not Tom Brady. That is the exact wrong answer. <laughs> but see, that's the point. And yeah, everybody has a reason. And a lot of times it comes down to the number of Super Bowls won. Is it Joe Montana, who was 4-4? Four four? Is it Tom Brady, who's won six but went to nine? And, you know, it seems to be the consensus now since Brady's won a couple more. When it was Brady had four rings and Montana had four rings, which to me is a weird part of the debate anyway, that we only judge it based on Super Bowl wings, as if the quarterback's the only one on the team that wins at the Super Bowl. Correct. Coach is involved, the other players are involved, but that's how we have debates. And I've been in the middle of those debates, the quarterback debate. Man, the passions get going. Yes, they do. And you start yelling, and you're like, what am I yelling about a debate that really doesn't matter for? But it's a great analogy to use the quarterback debate because exactly what Rob brought up is that there are several factors and several elements 
along with along with the, uh, the the quarterback itself. There's the offensive line. There's the entire defensive side of the ball. There's the receivers. Can they catch? Can they not catch? Uh, there's the good defensive schemes above it. There's so many slices to the greatest of all time pie. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it, it requires conversation. It requires, Rob, above that deeper thought yeah. than just who has the best stats, who has the best, you know, like you said, who has the most Super Bowl rings. It, it requires – a deeper thought and it requires a more calm look at things. And that's where I think <clears throat> good crap beer comes. <laughs> and you get to experience it in a way that is supporting a local business as well. So that's the other part that I love about this and how this is all come together. Because I think right now, again, I don't want to get too political and you can interpret this any way you want, but probably what I mean by this is not how you'll interpret it. Not you, Mike Russell, but just anybody. I think we have realized in the last four months or so, we don't have a lot of leaders in certain mm-hmm. positions. And I'm not talking about just in Washington. I'm talking about everywhere. I'm talking about in school boards. I'm talking about school superintendents. I'm talking about mayors of towns. And we need people to actually step up and lead. And leadership is about solutions and finding solutions. Too many of us now like to blame someone else. It, and that is the essence of what we're trying to get past to say, look, you know what? I deserve some culpability for X, Y, or Z. I will own that. What did I learn from that? This is how I'm going to continue to lead in the future. Because sometimes when you lead, you, you pick a solution and it doesn't work. And we, in, in this day and age, sort of crap all over that person now for making a mistake. Because we've created this sort of perfection bubble, which is impossible to achieve. But we do that. Now, if we were willing to sit down and have a craft beer, we might pop that bubble and go, oh, okay, this is what you were thinking when you made that decision. Oh, that's very interesting. I didn't think about it that way. Because that's the key to moving forward anything. Whatever the debate is, the key is simply you have to listen. You mm-hmm. have to ask questions. But you have to be willing to accept the other person's answers, you agree or not, without saying, I'm right, you're wrong. And even if you passionately think that you're right, you can't end the debate. You have to try to figure out how to move forward. The best way to do that, I would assume, is exactly what you're talking about. You're given two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you speak. And the biblical side of that is seek first to understand, to be understood. And when you, the only way you can understand is not just listening. Listening is not, doesn't work. Just doesn't. You have to empathize. I'm not talking about sympathize. Understanding is empathy. Empathy is an understanding. So you need to put yourself in their shoes. When you hear what they're saying, understand where they're coming from and who they are yeah. and why they're it. saying that and why they come from that side. Here's an example. And these are two best friends that live in Pittsburgh, New York. So they wanted to do something based on, you know, one of the big social events. And again, we don't want to talk. This is a brewman. You know, we yeah, talk about the other yeah. muscle hunter. It's all good. So what they did is they set up lawn chairs in front of other houses and invited people to chat. Like that's exact. This is right out of the Brewman's playbook. Like this is perfect. It's like one of the main roads, you know, one of the intersections. Your golf club. You can just come on in, grab a chair, grab a beer, have a conversation with. Them. Yes. Were they social distancing? They yeah. are actually. Okay, they look. I don't know if they're doing <laughs> it on purpose, but there's two lawn chairs. There's a table in between them, so they look to be about distancing. six feet apart. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Once again, I'm hugging everybody. Yeah. I have no problems hugging. Everybody. But look, and I think that's it. I love that hug because this is going to sound so cheesy oh, and so corny. It. But we that, we need to have like literal hugs, not yeah. physical hugs, but hugs for each other for different points of view. Because, you know, if we dig in and entrench and say, my point of view is the only way things are going to change. That's not true. No matter what your position is, no matter how right you think you are, you're never going to get your way completely. If you've ever been married... You know you ah. never get your way completely. <laughs> or at all. Exactly. Ever. But we all compromise. We do. It. We make our marriages work as best we can. And we move for Same with your kids. Mm-hmm. You know, you oh, don't let your yeah. kids run the run the, run the shop. You don't? Oh, okay. <laughs> doing this wrong for 14 years. <laughs> hey, they're trying. They're they trying. are. Trust they, me. they put you up to the test. Man, that's No question what, about it. Oh, they do. But that's the whole point. The whole point is here that we're here to engage in conversations. And or being sort of vague on purpose because the point of the bromance is to be able to have any conversation, Mm -hmm. no matter how difficult and how easy, whether it's the quarterback debate, whether it's about social issues, whether it's about government policies, 
you name it, we should be able to sit down, crack open a beer, maybe from Simple Machine Brewing and the uh, Transplant, Transplant City, City Beer Company. company yeah. yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's what we want to do. So we'd love it if you engaged us and you want to reach out to us, send us a note. You can find us at cheers at brewmance.beer. That's obviously our email address on Facebook at facebook.com slash the brewmance on Instagram at the underscore brewmance. And of course, we have the brewmance podcast for you as well, available everywhere you listen to podcasts like the iHeartRadio app. When we come back, as the brewmance on the radio, would you get paid to walk the Appalachian Trail? Of course you would. We'll tell you about it next. Hey, think you can't make money being in the outdoors? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can. It has nothing to do with construction. Welcome to the Brewman's. He is Rob Hunter. I am Mike Russell. We sit down each and every week with a beer of the week, a local beer of the week, a collaboration this week from Simple Machine and Transplant City Beer Co. out in the West. Right? This yeah, is yeah. the Marshall Law Belgian style saison. We'll get to that at the end of the program. See where that kind of beer style for us. We're mm-hmm. stepping outside of our own comfort zone here. Trying a Belgian style mm-hmm. saison. Lady Brewance will be thrilled. Yep. Yes. A lot of people think we're too IPA heavy. We, we are IPA. Okay. We're trying to expand, trying to get uncomfortable. This is my show. Yeah, man. <laughs> but, you know, it's good to try new things. You yeah. know, to coming together to make it, especially in the time that we have been having where a lot of these places have been closed to sit down service. They've had to rely on to go. Yes. How about this? The Devil's Backbone Brewing Company. I already dig that name. That is a I'm a big name. fan. It's a fantastic name. They're looking for a new position. They're hiring a new position now. I think that's fantastic. People are hiring. People are looking for jobs. How about a C-level position? Not a D, not a V. We're talking a C-level. Like, you're up there, right? Chief Hiking Officer. Whoa. Devil's Backbone wants to pay you $20,000 to go hike the Appalachian, 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 potato, potato. Uh <laughs> Trail, yeah, the Appalachian Trail, and drink beer. You heard that right. $20,000 to hike the Appalachian Trail and drink beer and be their chief hiking officer. Sign me up, uh, but I want to know if the hiking is optional. (laughs) No, it's not optional. Because you you know me. I do all things in the outdoors. I have outdoor programming here. We have an outdoor program. We we, we talk about all things outdoors. I talk about hiking. I do not go hiking. If you see Mike Russell hiking, that means I am dehydrated, lost, disoriented, approach with caution because I'm most likely armed. Just alert the authorities. What are you, Chevy Chase and vacation when the car breaks down? You're like, you know, walk through the Arizona desert? Find yeah. the tire store, yeah, or whatever. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. That. That's me hiking about a hundred yards oh, right okay. there. I'm in decent shape for an old man. Why don't you like hiking? And so I just, I don't, I don't know. You know what I think? Man, I think goes back to Disney. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. There you go. It goes back to Disneyland. I went on that stupid, uh, um, that treehouse thing. Where I was waiting in line to go in the treehouse by uh, by Indiana Jones and the Pirates of the Caribbean, like right in between there, that big treehouse thing. And I went on this line as a little kid. And I remember going and going and going and waiting and moving two more steps, waiting, moving two more steps. I thought we were in line as a kid. As a kid, I thought we were in line for a ride. Oh. There was no ride at the end. So oh. just walking to nothing and ending up in the same path, the same spot, not for mine. No, not for me. I don't. I don't do that. Unless you have a rifle and you're looking for an animal to hunt. That's not hiking. That's hunting. I'm in. Yes, I, well, but I it is. It's that. just a different form. Shh. There has to be Shh. sort of an end goal, I guess, for you. <laughs> yes, I, there does. I I like hiking. There's a limit where I just get bored out of my mind. So, Lady Brumance and I went up to Sedona. I don't remember when because time is just whatever. Now. Back when you could go places. Yeah, back yeah. when you remembered time. I don't know. It was two years ago. So we decided, all right, we're gonna go on this hike. So we come up, we park in the spot, and we're like, all right, let's go on this hike. This is like a six-mile hike. We're like, this would be great to be able to have a conversation, to be in nature, the red rocks. Phenomenal. So if we go on this trail, and you can see this big old red rock, and so you're looking right at it, and you're like, all right, cool. And then all of a sudden, you go into this like canopy of trees, and all of a sudden, you can't see any red rocks. And you're walking, you're walking, you're walking, you're walking. And you're bored out of your mind because you can't even see the red rocks. Yeah. So that should designate that trail as, this is a boring trail. There's no red rocks. <laughs> Welcome to boring trail. Hey. Yes, exactly. You know, Eight somehow, miles to boredom from this point. Right. But that's, I think, my limit on hiking is about three or four miles. Now, I can run all day long. 
Recently, I've been on a running streak before it got too hot even in the morning. So prior to that, because all the gyms were closed, I was going out and running my neighborhood. One day, I ran nine miles just for fun. I don't know why that's fun to me. I'm like, I don't know. I put on some podcast, and I was just rocking and rolling. Not many people in the world would know why that's fun to you. Yeah, I don't know. It's just great getting out, running in the neighborhood. But hiking for nine miles sounds atrocious unless it's in the Grand Canyon. Or I was getting paid 20 grand from yes. a brewery to go hike the Appalachian Trail. Now, if the brewery says... What was the name of this? Devil's Backbone yes. Brewing, nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains. They say they will outfit their chief hiking officer with gear, fly them to the trailhead, whether it's Georgia and Maine, see the start or the end. Sure. The website also says the brewery will hold some big old beer parties along the way. Oh, that sounds oh. amazing. This is perfect for my brother. My brother, Christopher, brother brewer. Brother, yeah. You might have seen him on Instagram. He's got a big old beard. Looks like a dude that would like to go on a hike. This is what he wants to do. In a couple of years, he wants to like kind of take a sabbatical from work or figure it out later. He wants to hike the Appalachian Trail or the John Muir Trail, which is out here in the Pacific. We love some John Muir. Yeah, exactly right. And this is like a perfect job for him. So he looked into it and he says the only problem is people from the great state of Massachusetts, where he lives, cannot apply, nor can people that live in the great state of Arizona, because we have rules against stupid things like this, I guess. Or That's lame. It's just the brewery that. Says, look, you have to be in Georgia, Maine, or somewhere along the trip. I don't know. Sure. They, they got, yeah, well, they mm -hmm. got their things about that. But why get a snow bear Arizona for it? I mean, at least take my application. You don't have to even call me back. I'll assume someone else got it. Yeah. You don't have to tell me it's not, you're not qualified because you live in the greatest state in the nation. Because it's technically a contest. And Arizona has really dumb rules when it comes to contesting. So, for example, we talked to you about what was it? One of the big beer companies was giving away free beer, Mike. Yeah, of course, like. Yeah, and you couldn't get it in Arizona. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah, ridiculous. That's dumb. That's one of the few dumb things about Arizona. This contest is intended for viewing in D.C., Delaware, Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, Maryland, North Carolina, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia only and will be governed by United States law. Now, let's see what it says. Uh, all agents of Anheuser-Busch, Double Back Room Brewing Company, it's really subsidized. Right, blah, 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 blah. All right, this no, is too much. Okay, okay but here's the deal, though. If, if you're going to go hiking... Which, which I don't, but I will if it's a walk to a brewery. Now, what what do you what what are the requirements that need to be met for you to call something a hike? So this is this is key because if we're going to hike the Appalachian Trail, twenty grand, lots of beer, uh, fun times, lots of beer parties along the way. Does it just have to be a walk in nature? Like if I walk to Transplant City Beer Company, which is about do you, maybe two miles from my house? Is that a hike? Am I hiking? Yeah, that's no. Or that's am I walking? Walk. Okay, walk. so in city is a walk. Yeah, hiking is in nature. Hiking okay. is in nature. That's okay. how they define the words. I'm, no, I'm in. I, I just want to see I'll what your definition is. Okay, so there's this place out in Parker called uh, Desert Bar that is only accessible essentially by like side by sides, rhinos, those kinds of things, yeah. like you know, ATVs. Um, I would do that. I would walk to, I would hike in the, in nature and in the desert to a bar where I can hang out, live music, yeah, everybody yeah. hanging out, and then walk back. I'm all about that. Or if Uber gets me there, I'd like to <laughs> come back, yeah. Well, uh -huh. the challenge with this one, it's 2,200 miles. The Appalachian Trail is 2,200 miles. It starts in Georgia and ends in Maine. Okay. You have to be willing to walk 2,200 miles. So you have to have your tent. You got to be carrying your gear. And if I thought a six-mile hike was boring, there's no way that I wouldn't think this would be excruciatingly boring. Now, maybe that's the point. you got to push past your boredom. you got to have nine pairs of shoes because you're going to have 87 billion blisters. But And you have to carry stuff around with you. Do you know the greatest part about that? They said lots of cool beer parties along the way. Yeah, now you're hungover. Yes. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> That's what you have to push past. Forget this push past the whole, you know, boredom thing. You got to push through a hangover. If you're hiking with a hangover, yeah, that's double trouble for me right there. Hangovers, Mike doesn't do. Hiking, Mike doesn't do. And whatever Rob said about moving your feet fast in the neighborhood, I don't even understand that. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. So that, but this is, this is something. I mean, look, everybody looking for a gig? 40 million Americans yeah. out of work. Uh, but we got a gig for you. But I just love the creativity of it. Like that's, sure. that's what craft brewers do so well. They oftentimes get creative with things like this or creative with their beers. And, and 
to have something like this is just cool. Like it's just like a moment of, all right, there is still cool things going on in the world, despite all the madness that we've been talking about solely for the last three, four months. But especially if the guys uh, or, or gal is like streaming it, is, you know, blogging about it and you can follow his or her path along yeah, the trail. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm sure the company, if they put 20 grand into this, I wish they put a little more into it to make it a little more enticing for a 22, what do you say? 2200 miles. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but if if you get to see it along the way, I'd definitely tune in and check it out. I'm sure Brother Brew would be all about that. Oh, yeah. He watches all kinds of these people that go on YouTube and have these hiking shows. He's all Dang. About yeah. He's bought in all the fancy tents. He's just getting get gearing up, ready to go. Okay. Like, he needs about six months in the wilderness, apparently. I'm like, bro, don't do one of those into the wild things. <laughs> no, no. It's the, it's the naked and afraid that you don't want to do. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Good yeah. idea. Coming up next, a major restaurant is turning to beer to hopefully save them. We'll talk about it on Brewmance. Don't forget you can find us on our website, brewmance.beer. And listen here, Saturday night, 6 to 7 on 550 KFY. Stay there. Beer to the rescue, the way it always should be. Welcome back to the Brewmance on the radio. We get together, have beers, because we know that division is thriving. We think that cracking open a beer allows us to have interesting conversations, getting together, getting past our, I guess, societal issues to tell us we're not supposed to get along news media is out here dividing us we're not trying to do it here on the brew on the nope. radio we're trying to bring people together no matter any type of walk of life that's what it's all about so we are mike russ my main man over there rob hunter that's the brewman so mike we drink a beer of the week every single week on the radio show here mm -hmm. arizona's only beer radio show what are we drinking today and i brought us something different mm -hmm. that's right a collab beer between simple machine brewing your hood rob and Transplant City Beer Company. It is called Martial Law. It is a Belgian style saison. Yeah. And I, you know something? I gave uh, TCBC some credit uh, a while back on our show, Russell and Hunter, because I, I, I said I, I saw that they weren't opening when a lot of the other restaurants and breweries were opening. But they said, you know something? We've got a smaller dining area, a uh, smaller, you know, it's social distancing really is the thing because we're, we're kind of a smaller place. And, you know, we're just going to wait a couple of weeks. And I really gave them credit for that because it was their decision. Yeah. It wasn't the government telling them they can't. They said, you know what? Social responsibility, just for our own sake, let's just let's drop nine and punt and just wait it out a bit. And I, I just gave them credit for that. I think I think what they did was was their call and it was good. I, I'd always give a tip of the hat to freedom. Every time. Freedom Absolutely. Choice. Absolutely. Choose. And for even to have the conversations, right? Yes. At a place like transplant when they're ready to have it. Like that's the most phenomenal part about being born in America is that we are afforded that right. And we want to make sure that everybody's afforded that right. That's what our document says. And being here to save that. That's what we're talking about here. You know who's doing it? Who's that? Cracker Barrel. What? Yeah, they're slowly reopening. Yeah. As they too have been closed by government shutdowns, COVID-19, you know it. So they are going to test beer and wine sales along with new menu items because, look, they were forced to change. Cracker Barrel had a good thing going on. There's Cracker Barrels all across yeah. this beautiful country that we have. People love some Cracker Barrel. Exactly. It's got a little country store around them. Yes. Go hang out while you're waiting for your table. I think the blueberry pancakes, is that what I get there? I don't oh, know. Man, it's so stinking really? good. But I would love to have some blueberry can pancakes with a beer. Go along with yes, it. that's what I'm beer talking and about. pancakes. How beautiful is that? <gasps> I wonder if you make beer batter pancakes. Now you're talking. I'm all crack about get on it. Not, I mean, I'm gonna get on that when I go home. I love it. This is nighttime. I don't care. This is a report yeah. from the nation's restaurant news. I don't care what time it is. Breakfast is always a good idea. Dang, right? The chain is expecting sales to be choppy for a while. And the CEO, Sandra B. Cochran, told investors that everyone is having trouble predicting what's going on mm -hmm. as restaurants reopen. Sure, because everybody has been scared by social media and the news media that we're all going to catch the COVID. And we also had a, a, a new, uh, what, what is it, a curfew here. So, I mean, the restaurants had to close at like 7 o'clock because they had to close down, finish up the night and get everybody home by 8 o'clock. So, yeah, I mean, that, that hurts the industry as well. Yeah, and that's a kind of a funny thing, right? It was a, it was a double-edged sword. So, all right, you're now allowed to be open. However, this week, you have to close by 8. However, there was an exception that – Restaurants could stay open past eight, I think, because there was a, a provision in Ducey's thing, Ducey governor, that said, unless you're getting food, 
So I'm like, does that mean restaurant? But any of them closed at six. They're like, I don't even want to bother with this. It sure as heck wasn't was in grocery stores because on day one, I went to, I, I got to the, after our show, I got to the grocery store at 7.54. And the woman at the, at the front said, you have six minutes to get whatever you want, get checked out. If you aren't in, are you, you if you aren't checking out at eight o'clock, we're going to have you drop your basket and get out of here. Yeah. Like, whoa. But that was, I think, a decision by them because, look, okay. they didn't want employees to be there in case looting started, would be my guess, because nobody was sure what was going to happen. And that's kind of it, right? We just don't know. Just like the Cracker Brow CEO said, we have no idea what's happening. Sure. We have no idea what people's attitudes are. We can poll people on presidential elections all day. We can get a gauge on how the country feels about the Arizona Senate race. But we have no idea. Who's going to go to restaurants across this country when it opens up? Yep. Oh, no. We don't know how many people it's going to be. We don't know how many people feel comfortable of it. We don't know how many people are waiting to see other people that go there. We don't know how many people are going to wait to see zero COVID cases before they actually set foot outside their home in a regular fashion. It's, it's weird. These are weird times. So this is going to be our era that defines our generation. You know, because, I mean, our grandparents had the Great Depression, World War II, back-to-back. -back, and they're like, okay, that's what we call them the greatest generation. Like, wow, you guys survived both of those and saved the world. That's phenomenal. So, parents had Vietnam. We had 9-11. Now we have this. And I can't speak uh, to 9-11. I wasn't really studying the craft beer industry back then. Uh, or, you know, World War II, Vietnam, any of that. But I can tell you that after this, I see more and more. It, it, this isn't a joke about alcoholism at all, but I see the knee jerk is sell beer. Like we don't know if we're going to be in numbers. Like Cracker Bro, sell beer. What if we start selling beer? And then the yeah. people that are selling beer, um, can we put Bloody Marys into growlers? Can we fill growlers with margaritas? Can we sell margaritas by the gallon? You know, it said, yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's their knee jerk. It isn't, you know, something we're going to do a two for one pancake stack sale. We're going to have biscuits and gravy two for one. Kids eat free. None. It is uh, uh, booze sales because, <laughs> because, like I've said in the past, beer has been the glue of this nation since it was founded. True. It has been there. It won't go away. Ciders can't take it out. Viruses can't take it out. Nothing can take it. Social events can't take it out. It is going to stay, and the nation turns to beer every single time it's pushed. Because beer is amazing. Beer is beautiful. Beer is lovely. Beer is, oh, it's just so much fun. And good for the gut. Mm, no. <laughs> Who cares? It's worth it. No, the gut, gut. Not your beer belly. Oh, that's not, right. Not my dad belly. We did no, see it's that. good for the gut. Like it's good for beer, yeah. I think even a saison, like these Belgian style these beers are the, ones. are the best kind. Yeah, dude, we are seriously to health. So we're Salud. promoting gut health right now. Mm -hmm. Right here on the Brewmance on the radio. I love it. But see, I'm wondering too if we're going to see more places like Cracker Barrel that didn't sell beer and wine turn to it because they need to make profit. And one of the ways restaurant businesses exist. It's because of beer and wine, because the markups are big. And we know that. We go in, we know that paying $7 for beer is a bit ridiculous. But we're like, who cares? We're out. It's worth it. It's awesome. And it allows this great restaurant to stay open. It's an atmosphere. Oh. I just made that. I love it's it. The atmosphere is why you pay 5 to $7 for a beer that costs the restaurant 75 cents. It's, it's, it's the atmosphere. So it's an atmosphere. Atmosphere. Yep. But it keeps restaurants open. That's what that's beers do. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But it's why we pay. It. Right. That's why people pay twelve dollars for a Manhattan or an old fashioned or fourteen bucks. Or if you're in Vegas, thirty six bucks. <laughs> I'll look at right. I'll look at but I'll look at a four pack and go, seventeen bucks. Yep. Jeez. You know why? Because I'm gonna take it home. And that's not an atmosphere. That's just a beer. If I go out with Rob. And I pay eight dollars for a beer because that would have made that a twenty-four dollar four pack. Yep. It's no big deal to me because it's the atmosphere. It's an atmosphere. Atmosphere. I, I made the word up. I love it. Hashtag that atmosphere. <laughs> but atmosphere is going to allow Cracker Barrel to stay open. Atmosphere is going to allow restaurants to stay open. Yes. And you know, 
I got theaters. If you don't drink, that's fine. I don't know. You see AMC this week. AMC says they might not be coming back at all. This is the largest movie theater chain in the world may not be reopening because of COVID-19 because they were shuttered. They were closed. No one wanted to go to the movie theater. And the government didn't allow anybody to go to the movie theater. Crazy time. I'm not movie. worried about that. I'm worried about Harkins. I'm worried about our boy. I'm worried about Team Harkins. Arizona team, right? That's what I'm worried about. So what did Harkins do? Dan Harkins put $150 million into his chain. And I think he's in three states, maybe. You probably got that wrong. He's in more than just one state. And uh, he, to put in the bars, to put in the uh, the concession, uh, the food the service, things like that. He stepped it up, knowing that he wasn't going to make any money off of the movies that he was doing. As the movie houses are just, just renegotiating everything. He, to make money to stay open, he had to put bars in his movie theaters. It is the thing. It, it, it you know, Rob brings up the uh, the margins and the markup, but it is a attractant more than it is a I'm making money because I'm selling an eight dollar beer that I bought for something. Well, think about you. You don't mind going to the movies with your kids, watch whatever movie they want to watch because you know you can get a couple of IPAs while you're there. And you're like, yes. all right, local craft beers on tap at Harkins. Yep. I'm in. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes it. That's what I call it's my twenty dollar nap. See, I like naps for free. Was that? But I like drinking beers when I watch. Movies. But I was, and then the kids are happy. Oh, yeah. You get home, you got the happy kids. Everybody's happy talking about the movie that you missed because you slept through it, but you don't matter because you had a tummy full of IPA and you just, <laughs> you, the seat went all the way back and you were right as rain. In a moment, you can't post beer pics in Thailand. You'll get in trouble. We'll tell you that story and we'll give you our beer review of our beer of the week. You're on the Brew Match on the radio right here on 550 KFI. There are a lot of things that you should be arrested for Posting a picture of beer should not be one of them. Thank goodness we're living in America. It is the Brewman's on the radio, Arizona's only beer radio show. Each and every week, we snuggle up to a wonderful Arizona beer. This week, Simple Machine, uh, Simple Machine Brewing and Transplant City Beer Company, Martial Law, Belgian Style Saison in just moments. We will review that for you. But apparently, if you don't live in the great Estados Unidos, that you can be rung up and maybe even given some jail time for posting a picture of beer. It's a little bit unbelievable, Mike, and you're exactly right. Remember where you live and go, okay, all the things going on, at least we don't get in trouble for this. More than 400 people in Bangkok, as well as organizations involved in the craft beer business, have been summoned by the regulatory authorities in Thailand, all because they posted pictures of beer on social media. Six craft beer associations have now lodged a complaint with the House of Representatives in Thailand, their public health commission, protesting the so-called Alcohol Beverage Control Act, which bars the display of alcohol for promotional purposes. This again in Thailand, the fines range between $1,580 $1,580 to $15,800. Right. You can also go to jail for a year Dang. for posting beer on social media. Whoa. Okay, obviously. We would be on death row yeah, for all the beer posters we have Seriously. at the underscore brewmance on uh, Instagram. Public <laughs> enemies number one and two. We're the Chuck D yeah, of craft beer you. in Thailand. Now, here's the issue, though. This is, this is what's funny about this. And you can think of anything funny. But obviously their intent with not being able to post pictures or advertise pictures of alcohol for uh, profit or whatever for advertising and promotion uh, is to not entice young people to drink alcohol. I can almost assure you that was it. That sure. was well into because government in their well intent, their good intentions, right? So it worked out so well that they have not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six craft beer institutions that are complaining about they they have such an alcohol industry yep. that obviously their plan to not be able to advertise or show a picture of alcohol for promotion is working so well that there is at least six beer com, uh, sorry beer groups that are filing a, a grievance well and here's why also unlike america in thailand because of covid-19 they banned the sales of alcohol so Crap, brewers, large brewers, whatever, bars, couldn't sell anything. So they haven't made any money for a couple of months. So they're saying, look, because you shut us down, we haven't made any money. 
Yeah. We have to show people we're back open. Like, come buy our beer, please. Otherwise, there's going to be no beer to buy. It's a very novel protest in Thailand. Hopefully, I know that they don't they take things very serious over there as first crime goes. Not quite Singapore, but hopefully they they relent a little bit. Okay, we did mess with your business a little bit, so yeah, so great. Okay. Now, oh, Europe, go ahead. Sorry. But the equivalent of time served, essentially, like, okay, what you posted already, we're just going to call it bygones because of that. But moving forward, nope, we're going to go back to the old ways. Nobody's punished. Okay, I would take that as a uh, as a middle ground. Yeah, and, and then that, that's right. That's the way what we're looking. We're not even – see, that's the thing. The funny thing about compromise, and we've been talking about a lot today, compromise isn't looking for the middle ground necessarily. It's looking for a point in which you can have a conversation and then take action. So we'll go back to the founding fathers, for example. What they just had to debate was they had two different sides, and they had to create a country based on a document to create that country. And they said, well, I'm on this side, I'm on that side. I said, okay, I don't like your position at all. I don't like your position at all. I think it's ridiculous, it's stupid, blah, blah, blah. They figured out a place where they could get to where they could both be in favor of. That doesn't mean it's in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's Usually not. No. You don't have to look for the exact middle, but you have to be willing to move a little bit in order to take action. Because if you are so stuck in your position, you're never going to take action or no one's actually going to help you take action. And and that's what you have to be wary of. And that's what a beer can do because you can, ooh, you can loosen up a little bit. Yeah. You can like enjoy the beer. <laughs> and you can enjoy the conversation. It doesn't have to be adversarial. Now, I like this. So Thailand... Is cracking down. Europe mm -hmm. trying to go the other way because Europe did a lot of shutdowns as well. Bars are back open in Europe gradually. So they, a lot of the bars, a lot of the breweries, are going to give away up to 1 million free or prepaid beers to try to get people to come back out. Yes. I'm in. You already there sold me. I already want to go to Europe just to get a beer. And your beer's cheap. Yeah. So that's a lot of beers. That's a lot of beers. The beer's not expensive in Europe. Exactly. From what Rob tells me, because well, I at least seen a Czech Republic. Republic. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a dollar. That's so we went, and this was mm, five, six years ago. So my wife and I and some friends, we went on a cruise on the Danube River. Now you start in Prague. You hang on Prague. There's like a free thing you can buy. So you go hang on Prague for like two, three days. Here's literally a dollar. It's literally a dollar. A water, a bottle of water is a dollar ten. Yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing. Of course I'm drunk. I try to stay hydrated. You, they're ripping me off. It's only a dollar. I'll save us money, honey. Eight bucks and I had yeah. eight beers. Big deal. The beer tabs are so good. Awesome. So in Europe, AB InBev launched this called Cafe Courage in Belgium. And it sold about 200,000 Stade Artois, mm -hmm. Jubiler, and other brands. Also started similar schemes across Europe, also in Brazil and Hong Kong. Why not America? I don't know about calling it a scheme, though. They don't I know. know a scheme sounds Come on, Yahoo mean. News. Yeah, scheme sounds kind of mean. It does. Scheme sounds nefarious. Yep. Yeah, this Heineken is good. It's also done it, too. 270,000 wow. vouchers. It must be European language, because they're calling it a scheme in this. So it must be European. Yeah, language. okay. Like a, like a plan. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Your scheme. Got it. Your scheme. Mm -hmm. Scheme to get people to come out to bars. But it's I absolutely true. love it, because, again, that's where conversations happen. You ever been to a bar or a brewery and just go in? Maybe you're hanging out with your buddies, and you end up talking to someone you've never met before, mm -hmm. and you have a substantial conversation. It's happened to me numerous times. Mike, you and I have been at a bar sometimes to talk to somebody. And you're like, yep. wow, that was an interesting conversation. Sometimes it lasts 20 minutes. Sometimes it's two hours. Yep. And you get to know somebody else. And someone maybe you never see again, never bother to contact again, but you enjoyed yourself in that moment. That is the benefit. As long as we do it responsibly, that beer, craft beer, can bring us. That's right. Let's talk about this beer. Yeah. Let's talk about this beer. I'm going to let you go first on this one. I'm interested in what your thoughts here. So this is a collaboration beer. Mm -hmm. Simple Machine Brewing Company, which is a newer brewing company in North Phoenix. And Transplant City Brewing Company, which Newer's is in well. neighborhood in Litchfield mm -hmm. Park. That's right. So they called this beer Martial Law. They decided to get together and make this. Mm -hmm. The two brewers. A beer brewed to maintain the peace, which ah. is exactly, exactly what we're trying to do here. I love it. But it's different for us. Mm -hmm. It's Belgian-style saison. We once did a beer review of some monk beer, St. Bernadou or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, the Bernadou, the yep. 12. The apartment 12. Model, one for us. One for us. So this is among those same realm. Belgian-style beers are a little bit different. They're 
We got more flavors. They're spicier. Mm. They got all kinds of weird notes in them that we're not used to. <laughs> and all this orange stuff. Yeah, it is. But I like this beer. I like it. It's just, it's different. It's kind of like a combination of beer meets, I don't know, something with ginger, like, you know, gingerbread or something. Hmm. But not quite as sweet as gingerbread. But it has like a bread kind of feel to it, like a taste kind of, it tastes like bread, but a kind of like a spicy, weedy bread mm-hmm. kind of taste. And I'm kind of digging it in this moment. I'm kind of like, hmm, I'm right. Get outside the comfort zone. Try something new. I'm going to take another sip before I give it a score because I want to hear what you're thinking about. Okay. Well. Well, well, here's the deal. I'll, I'll tell you this. Here at 550 KFYI, our morning show host, uh, Monday through Friday, is James C. Harris. He has turned me on to Jameson Whiskey. And the Irish Whiskey is was I, saw, I, was, I tried it, and I liked it. And now I drink it all the dang time. It's fantastic. The different, the cask mates, the, the, the stout barrels and the IPA barrels, it's been f- fabulous. I'm feeling the same as the first time I had Jameson. Like, I, I don't know if I love it, but I just can't stop drinking. Like, I, I, I like it, but I don't know if I love it. But I know if I have another one of these, I'm going to be looking for saisons. Like, I'm going to be looking for this kind of Belgian kind of stuff. I'm having the same. It's a it's a you got to want it kind of vibe because this is not an intro beer by any stretch of the imagination. This is a, OK, you're going to try something from another part of the world. Let me tell you, drink a little differently than we do. And I really enjoy it. I, I do enjoy this beer. See, I do think it's a good entry level. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Because the first time you have an IPA, if you drink one that's too bitter, you're going to be like, what is going on in the on my tongue? <laughs> so it's better to have something that's not quite bitter to work your way into it. So I think that this is a good way to work your way into Belgian-style I think this is beefier than the IPAs. I think you're going the wrong way. Well, I, I think know, it's easier to get to the IPAs than these. But I think it's it's different on um, how you would define beefy. It's just beefy in a different way. Okay. Because right. it's not as bitter. But I kind of dig it, too. So I'm just going to hook you guys up with a nice, nice, flat, even. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you an eight and a half. I know you're doing that. I'm going to give you an eight and a half. I yeah. like it. I drink another one right now. No, I'm all and about it. And it's only 6%. Yeah, I'm all about it. It's only 6% is the, the beauty of this whole thing. So for that, I'm going with an 8.5 as well. So I don't have anything to compare it to. So do another one, guys, and we'll check it out too. We'll see if we get better than 8.5. Great right, job, nope. guys. We got to get out of here. Well done, Simple Machine and Transplant City. 8.5 for you guys. We are the Brewmance. Check us out at brewmance.beer. See you next week. Cheers, everybody.